you look at the product moment correlation coefficient. Now at GCSE, you're used to doing correlation, you're used to doing scatter diagrams and drawing in a line of best fit and saying whether there was positive correlation, no correlation, or, or negative correlation. Now at um, AS level, we go a bit further, and we one of the first things we learn to do is to calculate what's called the product moment correlation coefficient. This is a numerical value, um, which we call R, and it lies between 1, or it can be equal to 1, um, or greater than or equal to minus 1. Now the one situation is here where all the points lie exactly on a straight line. So the correlation coefficient there would be plus 1. If they lie on a line with a negative gradient, the coefficient is minus 1. Don't confuse the numbers with gradient, it's simply positive or negative. One means there's a perfect fit with the data set and the line. And the majority of things that we look at, we don't get um, this kind of thing. We get um, a scatter. So this is a fairly good scatter. And so we're going to have quite high um, correlation here. So we might find R would be roughly about 0.8 here, positive and close to 1. Here, there's more scatter. So it might not be quite so high. It might be R equals 0.4. So what we learn um, in this chapter on the product moment correlation coefficient is how to calculate and interpret the coefficient. So we are looking at what's called bivariate data. So each uh, bit of data has two parts to it. So it could simply be um, the score you got in C1 and C2 out of 75. So your first score X could have been, say, 58 marks, and your second mark in your C2 could be 61 marks. So you would simply plot 58 against 61 uh, like this. So you'd have your 58, your 61, and that would be your plot. And we could test to see whether there was a correlation, and we might get um, a picture like this. And we can draw a straight line through there and say there's some correlation, or it's quite good. But we can find the exact coefficient providing we have on all of the values. So we need x and we need y. We also need xy and x squared and y squared, as they all form part um, of the final formulas. So in the particular case that we've got, we've got 58, 61. We've, here we'd have 58 times 61, and here we'd have 58 squared and 61 squared. And we'd use a calculator to work them out. Now, um, the formula then for r, and this is given um, in the formula books, is SXY over the square root of SXX SYY. Now that's not going to mean very much at the moment, so we have to break it down further and find out what SXX is equal to. And we're told that it's equal to the sum of X squared minus the sum of X all squared divided by N. The sum of y, y will be exactly the same, except we'll be writing y's instead of x's. And the sum of x, y was the sum of, so it's like one of the y's is replaced with an x. So we've got the sum of x, um, y, minus the sum of x times the sum of y, all over n. So um, to get these values, we simply um, need to sum the columns of information that I've shown you there. So I'm going to um, turn this, uh, take you on to the next page. So if we have x, y, bring that down here, right, x, y, x squared, y squared, and x, y, then we'll be given data. And it's not really important at this stage that I take you through a laborious calculation. But by adding up all the x scores, you have the sum of x. By adding up all the y squares, you have the sum of y. This column gives you the sum of x squared. This column gives you the sum of y squared. And this gives you the sum of x, y. Now in some questions, some of the columns are given, and you have to work out the rest. Um, in some questions, you're given everything that you need. So you might, for example, be told the sum of x is 220. The sum of y is... Um, 161, sum of x squared is, say, 2,700, sum of y squared, 3,200, 
and maybe 2800 here. So you're given everything that you actually need to work out the value of R. So you then have to take your component parts and say SXX equals, and it's a very good idea the first time you do this is to write everything out. And then look for the part. So the sum of x squared is 2700. The sum of x is 220. Remember, we've got to square that. And the number of values, well, you would have to be told that. Now, uh, I've written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Normally, you're given about 8 or 10 values. So let's just suppose it's a couple more. So let's say it's 8. It will be given to you. And, and we use a calculator to work out that value. We do exactly the same y and when you've done this a number of times you will be very familiar with this formula and there's no easy way of doing this work um, you need to practice and do a number of examples and then you'll find that you'll be able to do it fairly quickly um, in, now that's wrong so the 3200 is the sum of y squared and we need the sum of y 161 and that needs to be squared and divided by 8 and then S X Y equals the sum of um, X Y, which I wrote down as 2,800, minus the sum of X times the sum of Y over 8. So 2,800 minus sum of X, 220, sum of Y, 161. And then um, we have to divide that by 8. So when we have all these particular parts, I'm just going to call them A, B, and C. You can work them out with a calculator. To carefully then put them into the product correlation coefficient. So remember that R equals S X Y over the square root of S X X S Y Y. So in terms of what I've written then, it would be C over the square root of A B. Well, I've worked out the values of A, B, and C. And that is how you calculate the product moment correlation um, coefficient. Now, should the um, answer come out uh, as, say, 0.8, then you would say that there is strong positive correlation. So this is just formula work. Um, you have to be careful um, how you lay it all out. Sometimes you're going to have to work out the um, do the adding up yourself. Uh, other times you're given what's called the summary data, which you put into the formulas to calculate your value of R.